Hi guys, my name is Tony Leonard. I am a 2D, 3D concept designer based here in Los Angeles, California. And one of the things that uh, I am probably known for and specialize in is illustration for comic books, uh, usually using uh, pen and ink. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about part of my journey into using 3D. And especially for persons who do a lot of 2D, uh, I could understand, as I experienced, that moving into 3D, it can be a very uh, uh, time-consuming and sort of an uphill climb uh, and maybe even very intimidating uh, to you know just roll right into 3D. And so uh, it really, for me, wasn't until I found uh, ZBrush that I started to, you know, understand not only just the tool itself, but some of the possibilities of where I could take uh, design, um, not just for concept design, but also for one of my greatest passions, and that's comics, um, and how to use that tool uh, literally to draw through sculpting. And I think uh, kind of akin to some of the old masters who who used to sculpt um, a lot of those artists like uh, classic artists used to sculpt as well as draw and so uh, it's sort of a, a flip of the hat and really when you get down to brass tacks a lot of um, the tools within ZBrush are very much the same as uh, I choose to use pen and then I also employ you know uh, a chisel and I also employ this computer that has ZBrush on it and it's just another tool that you as an artist can pick and choose and and flourish uh, design wise and as you learn uh, about the tool itself I think uh, probably it's a very liberating experience uh, and especially in the area of concept design where you have production times um, and some of your design effort will probably be centered around uh, a lot of form language, shape play, uh, finding a silhouette uh, for design that works. Um, I'm going to talk about sort of drawing in clay uh, so that we can obtain a design that we really want. So first, some of the initial steps that I take is um, quite simply just to step into ZBrush and open up a either 32 or 64 resolution Dynamesh sphere. Uh, from the default projects in the spotlight. And what I'd quickly try to uh, make out is just using some uh, basic sculpting tools at first to come up with a sort of sample for this demo. Um, what I'm doing is doing a lot of masking, moving, and also clipping of the shape. And, you know, it, it basically boils down to a lot of uh, push pull. Uh, until I can derive some forms that I can run with uh, and what I'm working on is something kind of stylized um, it'll end up being hard surface so I'm using Dynamesh with uh, the polish button turned on and what that means is each time I re-Dynamesh uh, this mesh or reorder the Dynamesh if you're familiar with what Dynamesh is is just to you know uh, reorder some of the points uh, and every once in a while what it does is depending on the resolution it will reorder the points and sort of uh, flush out some some details so I never really make a lot of marks that are seriously permanent they are for land marking and that pretty much allows you a lot of flexibility uh, conceptually uh, that it doesn't marry you to the idea of making permanent strokes or marks and for this line art sample um, I'm merely making a lot of impressions that are sort of a, a first run, but deep enough uh, cuts into the mesh so that I have enough detail when it comes to putting on my Toon Shader or Toon Shader uh, line art matte cap. And I use a lot of basic sculpting tools here. So, you know, like hard polish, uh, S polish, uh, excuse me, H polish and S polish as well as using the Damien standard in the plus and negative. Uh, so holding alt may also uh, affect what kind of cuts that you're putting either in as far as deformations go or outward. 
And a lot of times what I'll do is along a lot of these plated edges, I'll use the Damien standard uh, sort of to build sort of a plateau of different uh, planner shapes. And then I cut into the mesh to give it some sort of modular qualities like here, where I cut a section, uh, use the transpose or move tool, lift it up and out, and then continue sculpting. And I'm keeping my buttons on the masking in a lot of ways because uh, each time I pluck out a shape, uh, whether I pull it down, I give it a smoothing wash, or maybe a redyna mesh, and I continue working and building up and refining some of those details. So as I make some progress here, um, I'm still in the initial phases of drawing out uh, details onto my silhouette, and I'll be refining those a little bit more as soon as I have uh, a few more landmarks. But uh, one special thing that I wanted to point out here is that using the Damien Standard, uh, which is relatively a pretty simple uh, sculpting brush, is not that much different than using a pencil onto a paper surface um, or either in Photoshop or any other you know drawing tool. Um, that the only difference being is that we have a 3D object that we're straight drawing to. Uh, but as far as like drawing out smaller details, or refining uh, certain details that we're going to later change into literal line art. Uh, this is not that much different than uh, working on a 2D surface. Um, the only thing is that I think I probably have a few more options uh, to, to play with uh, to derive this. And so in this next half of the video, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue sculpting this and refining this, and then we're gonna move into how we get some line art that we can use out of this design.